the Holy Spirit constantly will, will give you authority to change your financial situation. He'll constantly give it to you. Um, what I love about the Spirit of the Lord is that his patience in giving you a route to riches is so diligent. And he's so passionate about you having plenty and you living the good life. The Holy Spirit actually wants you to be wealthy more than you want to be wealthy. The Holy Spirit actually wants to give you money more than you want money. Now, saints, um, the love of money is a deception that Satan has used to keep children of God broke. Because the truth of the matter is, if you obey in God, it's impossible for you to love money. Love and money is disobedience, is rebellion, is witchcraft. And so the Holy Spirit wants you to be rich and wealthy and multimillionaire, multi-billionaire. And he doesn't want you to become that through anxiety and through impatience. He wants you to become that through enjoyment. So enjoy the path of God to wealth. Enjoy the path of God to riches. Don't rush. And don't get overly eager. Overly wise. And think that you need to become a multimillionaire either next week or nothing else. No, no, no. There's a path for every desired promise. There's a path for every designated mantle. The reason why God gives you the path, because the path purges. It purges of people, it purges of mindsets, it purges of compulsive decision making. You can have a hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, or ten thousand dollars, or five thousand dollars. And the options and the temptations will increase on using that money for certain things. But the path, it purges you of compulsive decisions. So when you get a certain level of finances, when God start taking you up, because he will take you up in the finances. When he start taking you up in the finances, you won't be uh, compulsive and just make decisions just because you got the power to make them. See, if God gave some people $5,000, they, they planning to go on a yacht. They planning to go to the Bahamas. They planning to go all type of places. You understand? When really that 5000 can mean God wants you to sow 3000 He wants you to sow 4000 He may, may want you to sow 5000 But see, if you don't go through the path, you'll get angry at God. Because he telling you to do something else with that large money. Are you seeing this? But when you're trained with the path. And, and son, isn't that crazy though? 5,000 not even enough money. And you imagine how many people plan. They only got 3,000, 2,000. They, they got these big planning. And they, don't, they can't see. You see what I'm saying? So you imagine how. Uh, poverty is a mindset and there are people that got large money that's still in poverty because the large money don't last for too long because of their wrong investments I'm not a compulsive spender um, you could even hear my enemies tell you before some of my enemies have even said, you know, if you be around Prophet Joshua Holmes, you'll, you'll find that he'll go to a place and he won't even buy nothing. His mindset is to buy for someone else. That's how I think. It takes me a while to do things for myself because I'm so driven to love and release love. And so unselfishness 
is a trait that God gives to you to be managed. Because there comes a time where God wants you to be selfish. And that's so powerful to me. By the way, if you're following me, you're going to see these numbers a lot. 111, 21, 121. And you'll see 91 as well. But 91, not as frequent. But 21, 111, 121. I just looked on my vehicle and it had 121 range of miles out of nowhere. You'll see those numbers a lot. But God trains you to be unselfish, but there'll be a time where God will let you be selfish. And the reason why he lets you be selfish is because now it's a due season for God to cater to you in a way. Now, the Holy Spirit is more dedicated about your prosperity than you. You ever wondered why would God connect me to Prophet Joshua Holmes? Because the Holy Spirit more dedicated to your prosperity than you. You could have been connected to many ministers over the last five years of your life. You've probably gone to churches. But look at God, how he aggressively scheduled a series of events for you to be connected to Prophet Joshua Holmes. He used a lot of judgmental events, <laughs> critical events, events that the natural mind would deem wrong. But it was right according to the father. Just to connect you to prophet Joshua Holmes. The father is more dedicated the Holy Spirit more dedicated about your prosperity than you. The Holy Spirit wants you rich more than you. If you look at King Jesus while he's teaching the people on earth, then he, he starts doing provisional miracles, multiplying food for them to eat. Why is he multiplying food for them to eat? He's revealing this provisional power to them. Wow. See, King Jesus is more dedicated about revealing the provisional power to you than you will ever be. He's showing them, hey, this is what I can do. I know that you, you see me heal the sick. I, I know that you see me raise the dead. I know that you see me cleanse the lepers. But this is me. I make it rich. I cause you to eat what you like to eat. Those people, they was dreaming about some Captain D's. There probably was two people in the crowd said, you ain't got no pork, Jesus. You only got two more minutes on the grass and then you got to go. In two more minutes. We're going to have Bartholomew get you out of here. Bartholomew you know Bartholomew my wife was petty when she got into an argument with Bartholomew she could, she tried to throw shade on his name that's why your name is Bartholomew let me tell you something let me tell you something <laughs> yeah shut up shut up let me tell you something King Jesus, he loves transferring the wealth power, the provisional power to those that are his disciples. <laughs> he loves doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> And so he was attempting to get Philip 
to receive that provisional power for signs and wonders. Now, I want you to remember this term because it's so spectacular. Provisional power. Provisional power for signs. You're not going to grab me. That's how people do when they get a call. They always talking about it's my mama, but this really my mama. This really my mama, though. How many y'all know? Sons, don't let her trick you. <laughs> my mama just keep on texting me at night. Don't let her trick you, son. <laughs> Dang, mom. I told you first. Mother, let me call you back. Mother, let me call you back. All right. That was my mama for real. Be a brother on the line, Tulsa. Man, I'm not your mama. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm not your mama. What you talking about, mama? <laughs> I said, mama, I'm going to call you back. I, listen, get, listen. I ain't call you for all of that. Are you gonna come or not? <laughs> Mama, I can't climb right now. I, 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 listen, listen. I'm, you gonna do it again? I'm just gonna hang up. Well, Mama, you can't hang up. Boom. He done hung up on the phone. Tell her, she always acting crazy. Oh my gosh, like she just. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing skits. The provisional power was being revealed to Philip because this was his destiny to move wealth, to move money, to move prosperity. That was his future. And so King Jesus was preparing him of how to move in the creative power of God for provision. Now, now, people of God, every time the father tell you to sow a seed, he's giving you the authority to activate provision glory. Did you catch that? He's giving you authority to activate provision glory. Provision glory is the power of the Holy Spirit at work on earth to restore the garden back to you. Now, I, I want you to always remember this. That provision glory is too high of power for serpents and scorpions to remain in your provisional entries, your provisional incomes. Provision glory is, is God's manifest presence so high that it will remove all of the poison in your provision. Because see, you know, food poison, there's financial poison. My God. And see, tradition has released too much financial poison on people's soul so that their soul can't move in the creative glory of God for provision. Because you meet two types of people. If they find out you saved, they either try to slander you for believing God for wealth or 
they try to rob you of the wealth. Y'all not hearing me. You're not hearing me. So either they try to stop you from getting it or after you get it, they try to get it from you. And then we can give another third class of people, people that try to make you feel for, feel bad for having it. Like I remember Tupac was talking about, I don't understand how Michael Jackson got all that money and there's poor people on the street. Nick, we don't understand how you signed the death row. You got all that money. You you at the casino and poor people on the street. Now, see, I can say that because I used to like Tupac. <laughs> Did I used to like how he acted? Yeah, because that's the thug in me. <laughs> see, see, some of y'all thought I was going to say, no, I ain't like the way that he acted. I just liked him for the person. No, no, no. I like how he acted because that's the thug. That's the thug life. <laughs> got some thugging me Got some thugging We thugging got the, you, got, you, you find out God got a little thug in him They told King Jesus They said Herod Told us to give you a message He said go tell that fox Go tell the fox That I'll raise myself up in three days Go tell them. Now that was some fight words. Because remember Herod was already trying to kill King Jesus. So for King Jesus to say go tell the fox. He added fuel to the fire. King Jesus wasn't trying to make peace with Herod. In, in modern day terms go tell that nig. <laughs> that pull up. Imagine, imagine, King Jesus tell him, pull up, pull up then. <laughs> pull up, doggone, then if, if you got problems, then fix it. Don't be sending no messengers. He know where I be. He know I'm going to Samaria tomorrow. He know, he know, he know that I'm being the synagogue on Thursday. He know it. He know I got a conference coming up in October. On my birthday, pull up. <laughs> you protect the financial glory cloud on your life by walking in love. And don't let haters stop you from being a lover of what God is having you do. Sometimes you're not going to get the proper reaction out of people. Don't think that what you do is in vain. The Holy Spirit will use you to constantly be a light, always. The Holy Spirit will use you. Now, when you are a sower and you're listening to God with money, there is a glory on you for you to command miracles. There's a glory for you to command money. For you to lose wealth and riches into your direction. There's a glory on you for you to receive financial lordship. And God will pitch you lord over higher levels of finances depending on how you deal with the finances that he keeps giving you. Let me give you a wisdom door that if you are not at the financial level that you want to be, don't cling to your savings account. Because I know when God was taking me higher in finances, there was times where I would cash out. 
not ignorantly, intentionally. I knew what I was doing. And I would name my seed and I would praise God and I would know how to keep myself before the face of God. Here's a wisdom of how to talk to God concerning your harvest. If you name your seed Cheetos, Lord, I praise you for Cheetos. I receive Cheetos. I give you glory for Cheetos moving in my life. I give you thanks for Cheetos. And you keep God in the mode of expectation that you have. You keep expressing your thankfulness because thankfulness is you telling God you already did it. And now you're doing it where everybody can see that it's done. Remember what King Jesus did. He took the five loaves, two fish. He gave thanks because thanks validifies the transaction. If you take a note, write that down. Thanks validifies the transaction. I received the sowing anointing on my life. I received great grace to be rich and have no lacks. I know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And through his poverty, I'm made rich. I received the riches anointed. It is a mantle from the Holy Spirit to be rich, to have money subdued underneath you. And for God to bring wells of money to you. It is an anointing. It is a glory. To keep going higher in financial favor. It's a real anointing. When you sow over a hundred dollars, it does something to your soul. It releases a level of faith. The thousand dollar seed is so powerful because no matter your financial level, it still takes a lot of virtue out of you to sow a thousand. When virtue leaves you in your sowing, virtue leaves God for your reaping. The connectivity of the sower and El Shaddai. When there's a collision between you sowing and the God of increase, the collision makes you get immersed with his wealth and his riches and his glory. And provision is the offspring of you crashing with God as a sower. There's an offspring of provisional miracles, debt cancellation. You hug God with your honor. Honor kisses King Jesus on the lips. It kisses the Lord. The seed kisses God. And God will produce a family of angels around you. I, I want you to hear this wisdom door. Sowing produces a family of angels around you. Ministering spirits become your family when you're sowing. Wow. This amazing. This fresh. Angels become your family through the seed. When you're sowing, you have a family of ministering spirits. And they're releasing you into your bloodline, the blood of Jesus. That has covenant riches in it, covenant wealth in it. I receive a family of angels on my life as I sow. I receive a family of ministering spirits on my life as I sow. Through the seed, I receive provisional glory. I decree provisional glory is upon my life. I decree money cometh to me. I decree that finances are loosed unto me right now in Jesus' name. I have no lacks. I receive great grace. Great grace is at work on me in Jesus' name.